Portainer is a free and open source tool to manage all your Docker containers. It has a nice and clean web UI and you can easily install that on any server via a docker run command, use a compose file or even deploy this in a full Kubernetes environment. And in this video let's have a look how to install that on an Ubuntu server and use Portainer to manage our Docker containers. Hi everybody, my name is Christian and I make great tutorials and content for IT professionals. I also stream a lot on Twitch and YouTube where I do some Q&As, live coding, hacking or other tech related stuff. It's always a lot of fun, so check it out. And in this video I will show you how to easily install Portainer on an Ubuntu server and use that to manage all our Docker resources on the local server. I also will have a look how to expose this service publicly on the internet with trusted SSL certificates by using a reverse proxy. But let us first start with some fundamentals and I hope you're already familiar with the concept of containerization in Docker in general. Because if you want to use Portainer you somehow need to install Docker first on your Ubuntu server. So if you don't know anything about Docker and how to install that on a server, just check out my video about Docker Explained Simply. There I will teach you all the fundamentals about containerization, Docker and walk you through the installation steps of Docker on an Ubuntu server. But you can also follow the official documentation on the Docker homepage. I've put you the link in the description below. And if you want to deploy this in a cloud environment, then just use a provider like DigitalOcean where you can easily install a one-click deployment of Ubuntu with Docker and already Docker Compose pre-installed. So that's pretty easy. Not this video is not sponsored by DigitalOcean in any way, but if you want to try it out, you will find a $100 free credits for 60 days referral link in the video description below. And if you continue to use their services, that also helps my channel. Okay guys, so if you have managed to install Docker on your Ubuntu server, we can now start with a tutorial. And as always, you don't need to remember any commands in this video. Just have a look in the video description below where I put you a link to my written blog article. There you can just copy and paste all the commands I'm going to use in this video. So let's get started. Okay guys, so I have already prepared a cloud instance on DigitalOcean with Ubuntu, Docker and Docker Compose installed. We can check it when we execute the command docker versions. And now if we want to install Portainer on this server to manage our docker containers, we can easily run this in a docker container. But first we need to create a new volume to store our data persistently on the system. So that can be easily done by executing the docker volume create. And then we simply just type in the name Portainer underscore data. So that will create a new volume we can just used to store our data inside the Docker container. And to run Portainer on this particular server, just execute the docker run command. Then we want to append this to the background with a dash D parameter. And we want to expose two ports here. The first port is a port 8000. So that is used for the Portainer agent. For example, if you want to connect remote servers, that can be done via the port 8000. And the other port for the web interface is a port 9000 we also want to expose. We want to set the name of the container to Portainer, of course. I want to restart it always so that the service is always on. And now we need to append a volume to this container that is in the location var run docker dot sock and basically point this to the same location inside the container. So this is very important if you want to manage your local Docker resources that are installed on this server, you need to forward this volume to the container. If you don't care about managing the local server and you only want to manage remote servers, for example, you probably can skip this. So now we also want to append the portainer data and point this to the data location. And we simply use the image portainer Portainer CE and CE stands for the free community edition because Portainer also has a paid business version. So let's hit enter and that automatically will run our container. We can check with Docker PS if the container is running. And now we simply need to access the public IP address of this container. Let's check the public IP address, copy this and open this in a web browser. So note we are using an unencrypted connection via HTTP because Portainer by default doesn't use any SSL certificates or something like this. So we will later have a look how to properly expose this service to the public internet with a reverse proxy. But first let's start with a basic installation of Portainer. So when you open the web UI the first time, you will need to set up a new password. So let's pick a secured password here. And I also want to deselect this collection of anonymous statistics. It's up to you if you select or deselect that. 
and create a new user. So now we need to select our portainer environment, so how we want to manage containers. And as I said, you can even deploy this in a full Kubernetes environment, which is absolutely awesome. Or connect this portainer container to a remote agent machine so that you can manage multiple portainer servers with just one single instance. But uh, in this case, we want to manage our local Docker environment. And it also tells us we need to make sure that this volume is appended to the Docker container. Note, we have done that before in the Docker run command. So let's click on connect and that automatically will connect the portainer installation to our local resources. You can see that it already has one container running and this is because portainer is always accessing everything that is running inside the container even if this was not deployed via portainer itself. So you can also add other servers here to manage everything in one single web UI, which is pretty awesome. You only need to register a new endpoint if you want to do that. And then you can simply decide how you want to deploy this, if you want to use a portainer agent that is running on the machine, or if you want to use the portainer edge agent, or you can basically just use the Docker API where you can just connect to a server or manage any Azure resources. So that is pretty cool. I've done that to manage multiple servers in one single portainer instance but first let's have a look how to manage our local docker resources by going back to the home dashboard and click on the local button here okay so now that takes us to the dashboard of our local instance here and you can see we have one container running and this is a portainer here you can simply manage all containers that are running on this machine you can start stop kill them restart and also add new containers so when you click on add new containers you simply can select an image here and enter all the details of this container you also have some access control settings here which are pretty useful and and as I said, you can define here the commands, the volumes, attach a network, set up environment variables, the restart policy, and basically everything that you can also do via the Docker CLI. You can also inspect your images here, inspect other resources like the Docker networks that are created here, the volumes, or you can get some information about the whole system in general. So one feature I absolutely love about Portainer is that you can also define some application templates. So for example, if you want to deploy a container or you quickly want to deploy a database server, a web server or any well-known application, you can use those app templates to easily and quickly deploy those containers. So on the app templates, for example, we can easily deploy an HTTPD service with Apache or use an Nginx server, MySQL databases and other applications that are well known. And that is pretty cool, but you also can define some custom templates here. So when you click on add custom templates, you can define those general options here. And you can also add some Docker Compose file options here. That is pretty cool. And you can also use that to deploy entire stacks. And we will use this feature here to deploy a stack of a reverse proxy and we will use that to expose our data to the public internet. So as I said, unencrypted HTTP traffic may be feasible for a local test environment, but if you want to expose this to the public internet, you usually want to encrypt your data with HTTPS and want to obtain a trusted SSL certificate. So I've recently done a video about the Nginx Proxy Manager, which also is a nice Nginx installation with a nice and clean web UI where you can easily define reverse proxies to expose any of these unencrypted web services to the internet and this is pretty cool we are going to use that in this tutorial but note if you don't know anything about nginx proxy manager and if you want to learn more about that then just have a look at my video about that where i will walk you through the installation steps with a docker compose file but in this tutorial we will have a look how to deploy this via portainer so if you go to my blog, you will find all the articles of my YouTube videos I make there. And as you will probably already know, you can easily copy and paste any of these commands or templates I have used in this tutorial. And in the recent video about the Nginx Proxy Manager, I have used a Docker Compose file to deploy this service. And we are going to copy all this stuff here and deploy this via a Portainer stack. So you can see how easy that is. So let's go to the Portainer web UI and click on Add Stack. And now we need to specify a new name. Set this to Nginx 
proxy manager. And now we easily can use the web editor and copy and paste the Docker compose file. You can also upload this link a Git repository or just use a custom template. In my case, I'm gonna use this Docker compose file. So now it is very important to notice that only compose files in the format of version two are supported at the moment. So we need to change that version number to version two here. But the version two and the version three don't have so much differences. And I think this file should be fine for version two as well. And then you can basically just click on deploy the stack. So that will automatically create and deploy those two containers and set up everything like it is described in the Docker Compose file. So note you could also deploy Docker Compose files in a YAML file with a CLI of Docker Compose, of course, but then Portainer doesn't have the full control over the stack because you haven't deployed this via Portainer. So you can see our Nginx proxy manager is now running. We have total control over the stack. And if we click on that, we can stop, delete it, or change some information about this. We can also see the two containers that are currently running here. And you can see the first container is the application. The second container is the database. And you can see it also has published these three ports here, the 443, the port 80, and the 81. And the 81 is the web UI of the Nginx proxy manager. So when you click on this here, you will see it points you to the 0000 IP address. So you can easily change that when you go to the endpoints and edit the local endpoint. So you can add an IP address here or the fully qualified domain name. So in this example, I'm going to use that IP address here because I cannot use the fully qualified domain name. And now if we click on that link here, that will take us to the public IP address on port 81. So note this is also an unsecured connection. Of course, you can create a proxy host for this web UI as well and for the Portano UI. So let's log into the Nginx proxy manager by using the credentials admin example.com and the password is change me. And if you signed in the first time, you need to change the administrator email address and set up secured credentials here. So now we can add a new proxy host here. Enter the domain name and I've just obtained this domain that will point to the public IP address here. I know we want to forward the connection to Portainer and we need to use the port 9000. So note you can also add a subdomains if you want to segregate the Portainer web UI from the Nginx proxy manager UI. So for example, you can add a subdomain that uh, points to portainer.xcloud.thedigitallife.com or you can use the Nginx proxy manager subdomain and point this to different containers to segregate this. Okay, so now we can also add this block common exploits to add some more security to our site and just go to SSL certificates and request a new certificate. Enter also the HTTP2 support and force SSL connection and HSTS for more security. And then you simply click on save. So that will try to obtain a trusted SSL certificate and add the proxy host so we can now connect to our Portainer web UI. So when you now click on this link here, this probably won't work right away. And the reason is because we have deployed the Nginx proxy manager in a Docker Compose stack that will automatically create a new network and attach then the Nginx proxy manager to an isolated Docker network and the Portainer container is running on a separate Docker network. So we need to make sure that all the Docker containers you want to expose via the reverse proxy are running in the same Docker network because these networks are isolated from each other. So what we need to do is we need to redeploy our Portainer container. And you can easily do this via the Docker run command on the CLI. We also want to close down the port 9000 because otherwise people can still access the Portainer container via the port 9000 over HTTP. That is something we don't want. So let's go back to our server and let's execute the docker stop portainer command. And we also want to remove the portainer container. So now we need to check which docker networks are currently running. You can do that via docker network ls command and you can see because we have deployed Nginx proxy manager in a stack that automatically has created a new network, we now want to copy that here and redeploy our Portainer container. So we want to change two things here. First, we don't want to expose the port 9000 directly anymore to the public internet uh, because we want to do this via the reverse proxy. And we also want to add a network and put this Portainer container in the same network like the Nginx proxy manager. So now let's go back to our web browser 
And let's click on the link again. And you should see now we have access to the Portainer container. We are the Nginx proxy manager. We are running this via HTTPS. The connection is secured. And we can now basically just use the credentials we have created to log into the Portainer web UI. And you can see everything is running fine. So this is how you can easily expose the Portainer web UI securely to the public internet and secure this via the Nginx proxy manager. So I think Portainer is a really, really cool software. It's really amazing and easy to set up Docker Compose files or single containers and manage your entire Portainer server. And if this video helps you, then please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more tutorials or content for IT professionals. By the way, I also want to do a new tutorial on Portainer managed by Kubernetes and basically just get started with Kubernetes in general. So if you're interested in this, then don't forget to ring the bell to get a notification once I make those videos online. And please leave me in the comments, what do you think of Portainer? Do you use it already in your environment or do you plan to use it and so just tell me your thoughts I would be really really interested in your feedback and if you have any trouble or problems setting up this then just join our discord community we have a really really cool and great discord community so a quick shout out to everybody there you are just amazing a quick reminder I also stream a lot on twitch and youtube and if you have any questions you can also jump into my live streams and yeah just hang out and chill <laughs> So before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to all my supporters on Patreon, especially Mason, who is the producer of the show. And if you enjoy that, and if you want to support my mission to help as many people as possible to jump in the field of IT and become real IT professionals, just support me on Patreon. <laughs> so thanks everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care of yourself and I see you soon.